Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane Digital Audio School down in Montpellier, France, an Ableton Certified Training Centre. In this series of tutorials, we're learning how to use the Max for Live devices that got revamped with the release of Live 10. We've already looked at LFO and the follow-up to that is obviously the envelope. Let's have a look at that. So to discover the Max for Live envelope, I'm going to use the same musical example I used for the LFO in the previous video. So remember, I had an analog synthesizer loaded with two so tooth, slightly detuned, and I used the LFO to move to modulate the sync option on both these oscillators. They have an inverted movement. One sync goes up when the other one goes down, and it gives us a very lively sound where the harmonics are changing. Listen. There, so that's something we could not do without the LFO. Now, envelopes are pretty much the same as LFO. They're modulators. They are tools to enable us to move certain parameters within the synthesizers. Now, in analog, we have a few envelopes. We have one two-stage envelope here for the oscillators. We have a four-stage envelope that can be sent to the resonance and the filter frequency. And we also have a four-stage envelope that can be sent in the panoramic, but is always attached to the level, to the volume of the synthesizer. Now, once again, it's slightly restrictive. We only have five destinations for these envelopes and they are specifically attached to these parameters. We cannot send them to wherever we want. This is where the Max for Live envelope comes really handy. I'm gonna go and fetch it into the Max for Live tab. I'm gonna write envelope up there. And in the MIDI effect, I'm gonna find my envelope. Now, the old one was blue, the new one is yellow. So we're gonna use the new one. It has more to offer. Now, if you did watch the last tutorial, you remember I said one of the issues, small issue we have with the built-in LFOs is that when we feed them into a parameter, we cannot see the parameter move. We can hear it move, we can hear its effect on the parameter, but we cannot visualize the movement. Well, it's the same with the envelopes here. As I feed them into the parameters, we cannot see the parameters move, but we can hear the effect they have on the parameter. Well, that's quite convenient for us. The LFOs and the envelope Max for Live will show us the movement. So I'm gonna map with the map button here. I'm gonna map a parameter in Live. I'm gonna map this fader here. And you'll find now that if I trigger the envelope, I can see the parameter move and I can visualize the movement implemented by this four stage envelope. So envelope, as I said, are a modulation tool. However, they do not work like LFOs. LFOs implement a cyclic movement. The envelopes are a linear movement. They have a beginning, a middle and an end. And the trigger, the triggering of these envelopes is linked to the actual MIDI notes we feed into them. So as I trigger my controller and a key on my controller, I send the envelope into action and it will unfold. Same thing if I send notes from MIDI clips, you'll find that the envelope unfolds every time a note is triggered. So let's explain these four stages we have here. We have attack, decay, sustain, release. The attack is the first stage that happens when I trigger a note and it will set the time it will take for the parameter to go from its initial value to its maximum value. So as I have a short envelope, the fader moves really quickly up there, quite punchy. And as I move the envelope to a longer time, the fader takes a long time to go up to its maximum value. Quite easy to understand. Now, what is and how do we set the minimum and maximum value of the parameter? Well, the minimum value is set here with the percentage zero. We can raise it and as I raise it, you can see the minimum is changing. And as I trigger the envelope now, you see that it moves from that point onwards. Yeah, so that's easily done. So we can set the global range of the movement using the amount button here. This will set the maximum value globally. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna make the attack a lot faster so we can see how far it goes. You see here, we can set it to its maximum. I'm gonna take the velocity off and you can see that it goes all the way up. You see all the way up to the fader. And as I lower the value, it reduces the value and the actual range of the movement. Now, this value here, the percentage is a relative value of this value here. So now with this 100%, as I lower the 100%, I can set the maximum value within the range set by the amount button here. And as I go to 100%, I am still restricted by the value set by the amount here. Okay, so there's a kind of a hierarchy between these two. It's a relative value, okay? 
So back to my ADSR attack the case sustained release. I was explaining the attack is how long, so it's a time value, how long it will take for the parameter to go from its initial value to its maximum value, and we demonstrated that. Now the next stage is the decay, and as you look at the fader, it goes back down from its maximum value. That's the decay, the time it will take for the parameter to go from its maximum value to its sustained value. So as I lower the value here, it goes back down really quickly. As I raise the value, it goes down really slowly, okay? And now we need to explain quickly what's the sustain since it's linked to the decay and the decay uh, destination, if you may. So the sustain is the only one of the four stages that is not a time value, it's an arbitrary value. So it sets how loud or how high the parameter will stay as long as I hold the key on my controller or as long as the note is sustained. So as I press and hold that key, you see we stay at this level for the parameter. As I lower the sustain now, the level of sustain is much lower or greater if I put it at the top there. And as it's raised to its maximum, you find that the decay is now obsolete since the maximum value is equal to the sustain value. So the fader or the parameter will not go back down. It will stay at its maximum value. And as I bring the sustain all the way down, we only have decay, no more sustain, so the sound stops as it raises its destination on the decay stage. Okay, so we have left the last value, which is the release. The release happens when I let go of the key, when the not off message is received. So as I let go of the key, you'll find that the release will set the time it will take for the parameter to go from its sustain value to its initial value. So let's go, we're into sustain now. I let go of the key. And that's the time it took for it to go back down. As I raise the release now, and I reach the sustain, I let go of the key, and it takes a much longer time for the release to go back down. Now, you notice that the sound actually stopped before the release time had finished, of course, because I'm modulating, I'm actually moving this fader here, but it's all closely linked to the actual release value on the synth itself, isn't it? So if I raise the synth release value here, now you'll find that I will have sound whilst the fader goes back down. There you go, I let go, and yeah, we'll, we almost have the same value here, so that's, that's quite kind of better like so yeah great now one thing we have to understand about how envelopes work if i let go of the key before the end of the, the attack or the end of the, the decay we'll go straight into release and we won't even reach the sustain value like this see we go straight into release yeah, if I let go of the key before the two first stages are completed. Okay, so we can now change this envelope from a four-stage envelope to a three-stage envelope. If I take off that sustain option here, now as I press the key and I hold the key, you find that we won't stay on the sustain value, we'll go straight to the release like so, into the key into release straight away. So the little dot here doesn't show us where into release, but if you look at the fader here, you find that the fader carries on its course down, okay? So we, we don't we don't actually see the little uh, dot moving. So it's probably a little bug really. It should be it would be nicer if it if it moved at the same time, yeah? So I'm gonna put that sustain back in. Another option we have into envelope is that the amount here set, which basically sets the range of the movement, it can be associated and linked to the velocity of the nodes, okay? So if I trigger a very uh, low velocity note, you're gonna find that the fader here doesn't go very high. Let's let's lower the value even more. See, now I've got very low value, the fader barely moves, so I, I raise the value a little bit, yeah, it goes a little higher, I raise the value a bit more, it goes even higher, etc, etc, you see. As I raise the value of the velocity, well, it changes the maximum value of the parameter. So I can take off that option, simply taking off that velocity option right there, okay? So that's in two words how this envelope works. Now we have a few more parameters here I want to explore with you. We have a time value here. This is great. This is a global time value for the, the, the three stages, the three time value stages. So the attack, the decay, and the release, remember there are time values. Well, I can change all of these values written right underneath uh, the dials here using this value here. So as I'm at one, the values written right underneath the, the, the knobs are going to be the ones applied this way, okay? And as I lower the value now, it's going to go a lot faster. See? 
it goes a lot faster. Yeah, if I raise above one, I raise the value of all three stages. So it's like a global time value for uh, our envelope here. Now, one thing I forgot to say, I can curve. You see, I can curve the uh, actual slopes here using the percentages negative and positive here to get even more control over the movement I'm implying. Cool. Now, one last parameter, but not least, is the options we have here. So. If you remember, I said envelopes and the triggering of an envelope and the stages of an envelope is directly linked, associated to the trigger of the MIDI nodes. As I trigger a key on my keyboard, I trigger the attack stage and that envelope unfolds given the time values underneath these knobs. And then when I let go of the key, I start the release stage. It's all really linked to that node triggering from the clips or from the controller. And that's by default how envelopes work. However, this envelope gives us the option to sync the envelope to the tempo of live. Um, and this will produce a bit like an LFO, a cyclic movement. We only have, in that case, two stages, attack, decay, and it repeats, attack, decay, attack, decay, attack, decay. Now, for this to work, I need, obviously, to start the actual sequencer. And I've got two long MIDI notes here in a clip, so I'm gonna trigger that. And you can see here, the movement is now cyclic. So I'm gonna accelerate the movement. I'm gonna make this shorter. There you go. And now we, almost like an LFO, we, we're finding finding that we have a lot of control over a cyclic movement, you see? S yeah, slower, faster. And I, I can also, um, I'm going to let go of that now. I can also trigger it, obviously, with my controller. And this will also get it into a cyclic movement if I hold the key. But at the moment, the sequencer is not going, so it's not working. I'm going to start the sequencer again. Let go of the clip and trigger this manually now. And you see, it's even even though I've stopped the clip, it's still going, right? Cool. Now I can kind of swing that using the time values here. You see, I can change, it's not really swing, but I can slightly uh, slightly offset a little bit the, the, the movement here. Well, that's easy to understand. It's really convenient to add movement to your parameters, obviously, as you could hear with the uh, volume fader here. Now I can do the same thing, but unsynchronize. So I'm gonna trigger a note here. You see, now, this is completely independent of live's tempo, giving us a really, like, sort of free movement, if you may, yeah? And you can see AD, 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 attack, decay, attack, decay, yeah? And all we have to do now is set the time here with the uh, the value here that I showed you earlier on, yeah? So, great. So, now, final option, the echo. So, echo is like a delay, isn't it? It's like a repetition of a movement, isn't it? So, I'm going to take the sustain off to demonstrate that one and bring the, the release down, the sustain down, sorry. I'm going to trigger a note and let go of the key. So, see, it's still going, but it's going slower, yeah? So, it's like an echo into the movement, yeah? So, I can make the echo up and later, I can delay the echo. I can make the range of the echo change as well. I'm gonna put a bit more decay here. Yeah, I'm gonna make it happen better for you, yeah? Yes, it's still going. It's like a, a delay, it still goes and goes and goes and goes for quite a long time. I can change the value here as well. Make it happen quicker. See, I let go of the key. Let's show you with a, an actual MIDI note here. See, I've got a very short MIDI note in a clip here. I'm gonna trigger that. You see? Yeah, I'm still, I'm going to make the clip even longer so you can really hear how the, the delay happens. It's like an, a MIDI delay, if you may. Yeah, so let's, let's trigger again. And see, it's it's going now. And as I let go of the key as well, something happens. It's re-triggering as soon as the note off message is sent. See? Da -da 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 -da. Yes, I can see how how late the, the second hit will happen with the um, MS here, the uh, milliseconds. Hey? Yeah, so everything is really controllable here. You see, I can really set the delay to happen. You know. So it's like the envelope is happening again and again and again and again and again. It's like an echo in the movement of the envelope. So that's it. You know your way around the device now. You see, it's slightly more complex than an LFO. Yeah, you, we have more options. It's sl slightly harder to understand. Now, I'm going to show you a real life possibility with this uh, envelope. As I said, this can be assigned wherever you want in Ableton Live, but I'm going to assign it to the pitch of my oscillators because you know in analog I only have a source and a destination envelope it's only a two-stage envelope so it's not great so let's map this to the detune 
of my uh, uh, analog. And let's let's start the main clip again. All right, let's reset the volume here. Okay, cool. So you can see now the detune of the synths has got now four stages. Look, I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to reduce the size of this note so we can hear the release stage. Okay, let's do that. Let's make these really quick. Here we go. You see, it's going into. I'm gonna make it zero here. Yeah, we're gonna put it back into three. And I can now, you know, you see, I have four stages. Yeah, so you see, you got a lot of possibilities open to you there. Yeah, this is great. So let's let's reset these values here. And let's make it so it only goes from zero to let's say three. Let's re let's lower the, the maximum. Slight D tune. You can hear it now happening. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the second oscillator into play. Open the multi assignment tab and assign the D tune on the other synthesizer on the other oscillator. Sorry. And we're going to make this one go from 50 to zero. So we're going to invert the movement. Yeah, and you can see now the movements are opposite just like I did with the the sync remember they're going in opposite directions yeah and now I can easily set the maximum and you can see I, I can I really change the, the beating effect here yeah I can really play with that to get the, the, the right effect Yeah, again, creating a lot of movement in the texture of the sound. I'm going to take that release down a bit. It's slightly annoying. Yeah, great. Yeah, you can really hear the movement now happening. So that's one of the many assignments that can be achieved and results, musical results. It's really musical, isn't it? It's really convenient. And not just that, it's, it has a, a, a tremendous effect on the results. Only... I only had a two-stage envelope for my pitch in analog. Well, now I've got a four-stage envelope. I can assign to many different parameters in live, getting everything to move together in sync, okay? So hopefully these new tools, these modular type tools, will now uh, integrate your workflow like it has for mine. And I'll see you in another video. The next video will, will study the shaper, the new tool we have on Live 10.